If you're concerned about low sperm count, decreased ejaculate volume, and a host of other problems that you ascribe to finasteride, this video is for you. I'll ask you just one question. Did you get your sperm analysis done before starting finasteride? If not, how can finasteride be the only reason? If you're concerned about scientific purity, if you're constantly obsessed in isolating variables in any study, you always want proof of a double blind trial, but remain blind to clinical evidence staring you at your face, this video may not be for you. Each one of us is only half the man our grandfathers were. And I'm not talking this in metaphor. There is enough scientific evidence to support this fact as Tim Ferriss in his book brought out that with each successive year since 1940, sperm counts in the human race have been dwindling by 1% every year. And this is rather alarming. No wonder the long lines in fertility clinics, five year wait to get your turn. And if you don't believe this, look in your immediate neighborhood, your social circle, your relatives, and you will see with each passing year, couples are having greater difficulty in conceiving. So here I list the common reasons why we have low sperm count. Number one is our lifestyle. Most of us lead sedentary habits. Number two, obesity. And number three, endocrine disrupting chemicals like phthalates and BPA, bisphenol A. But more than all this, what I suspect, and I have clinical evidence to prove this, is our constant use of cell phones. Early GSM networks had only a radio frequency of 850 megahertz. It increased with 2G, 3G and then 4G. But today with 5G networks, we are exposed to radio frequencies of up to 6 gigahertz. Research as we all know is quite controversial. Whereas one study proves the point, two studies close on its seals are disproving the first study. And we end up more confused than before. So when the laboratory analyzes your sperms, the sperm analysis covers three basic things, three parameters. Number one is the count, how many swimmers you have in the sample. Number two is morphology, how many of these swimmers have tadpole-like features. And number three, how many of these swimmers can swim as fast as Michael Phelps. And any variation in these three parameters can cause you to become infertile. There is strong evidence, clinical evidence, and there are many papers which have been published, if you Google this, that radio frequency emanating from your cell phone kept close to your sperm factories can cause decreased sperm count. Treating hair loss sufferers through hair transplant, through medication, especially finasteride, made me more of an andrologist than my basic training as a plastic surgeon. I now know how drugs act, how hormones affect the body, and how merely doing hair transplant to cover bald areas is not a holistic approach to hair restoration. In my patients who have been reporting low sperm counts, decreased volume of ejaculate, I have been constantly advising them, counseling them to keep Keep their phones away from their body. To keep the phones away in your bag or far from you and especially at night don't keep your phones next to your bed. And I have found that in these patients in three months their sperm count which was low begins to climb. It takes about 64 days after maintaining strict abstinence from the cell phone next to your body for your sperm count to go up. And in most cases I have seen it goes up to normal counts in six months. But these are the cases who have not got their sperm count done before starting finasteride. If your sperm count is low before initiating yourself on finasteride, that is another matter. One out of 10 males in United States of America are infertile and 60% of males have low sperm count before they start finasteride. So ascribing low sperm counts, low volume ejaculate to finasteride alone, we are only fooling ourselves. There are other underlying problems which we need to address before we blame finasteride for all our miseries. I'm not for a moment saying that finasteride does not have the side effect of affecting your sperms. I'm not for a moment saying that. But I want to impress upon you, drive home the message that there are other factors. The human race in general has much lower sperm counts today than it had in 1940. The average sperm count was 100 million per milliliter, whereas today it is merely 30 million per milliliter. And that's a huge difference. When current literature about the use of cell phones is strong enough and the inconvenience of not putting your cell phone next to your body is minimal enough, why should we wait for scientific consensus? If you have low sperm count after starting finasteride, try keeping your phone away from your body for three months and you will note the difference. At my clinic, Darling Buzz Clinic, I have always striven to approach a patient who's a hair loss sufferer who needs medication 
who needs a hair transplant with empathy and due sensitivity and stress home the point that there are a lot of lifestyle changes which need to be modified besides only selling profit driven treatments like merely hair transplants to cover the bald patches. So this was the talk for the day about those who are bothered about low sperm counts after starting Finasteride. And I hope I've made my point clear. And if you have any questions, any doubts in your mind about hair loss, about the use of medication, about hair transplant, I'm there to help. Please leave a comment in the comment section below or mail me at drbhatti at darlingbuds.com. And I promise I'll not keep you waiting. And do subscribe to my channel.